What's going on everyone, it's your average consumer and today I have a bit of a different video it's not necessarily a review or an unboxing but more so some tips that I have on how to be a smart consumer as you can tell by the title so let's not waste any time, let's get right into it now the first tip I have for you guys is to do your research doing your research is probably one of the most important aspects of being a smart consumer and that's probably why some of you are already subscribed to a channel like mine or watch videos like it. You guys are watching to see reviews on products that you intend to purchase or you want to purchase and you just want to make sure it's worth your money. So you guys already have a foot in the door but I highly suggest if you know, you're know you purchasing something definitely do as much research as possible. Read reviews online from different users watch reviews from people on YouTube like myself, all kinds of stuff. So just make sure you're really doing that part and you'll be well aware of what you're getting yourself into. Now the next tip I have for you guys is think about how you're going to use that product daily. So you really want to do this so you can kind of get some insight into how you're going to be using this thing and what exactly you'll be looking for on a day-to-day -day basis. So by thinking about how you're going to use it day one, day two, day three, you're going to be thinking about what kind of features you're looking for to satisfy those days. So that's really a good tip to keep in mind, how you want to use it daily, because it will narrow down your features or whatever you're looking for in that product. And you can kind of hone in on what exactly you're looking for. And also, if you're on the fence about a product, if you think about how you're going to use it daily, you can kind of think of whether or not it's going to actually be worth it. So if it's something that you want, like you see everyone with it or something, but you try to think about how you're going to use it daily and you just can't see how you'll be using it, like let's say a tablet. So it'll kind of push you off the fence towards making that purchase because you'll realize that you probably really don't need it. Now my next tip is to focus on the cons when you're reading your reviews or doing your research. Now the reason I say that is because you'll have no surprises when you get the actual product. There won't be any real shocking values when you get the product and it starts acting funny or something like that because you'll be well aware of that and you'll know if it's a defect or not. Also, another thing about cons is if it's not necessarily a defect or and it's just a bad aspect of the product in general, maybe it's too slim, maybe it's too thick, something like that, you can kind of see whether or not you're willing to deal with that. So definitely pay attention to the cons because just because someone might think something is a con doesn't mean you'll find it to be a con. So if I think the iPad mini is too big, you might think that it's just the right size. So if that's the only bad aspect that I'm bringing up in a review, then that means that product will probably be really great for you as there really aren't any negatives that you won't be able to deal with. Now my next tip is a little harder to do, but with some really good thinking you can probably figure it out. Knowing your reviewer and knowing what level of standards they have. If you're looking for a product and someone who's a professional says it's terrible, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be terrible for you. So you really want to find someone that you can relate to or someone that has the same level of expectations as yourself. Now, if I were to be looking for a review on a microwave, I just want the microwave to make my food hot. If I'm reading a review by a chef who's really upset that the microwave won't heat up the food to 93 degrees Fahrenheit, I don't know, something. If I see that and then I just think about, whoa, that's a really bad review, it can't do that, I'm not going to buy it. That'd be pretty foolish because I don't necessarily need that exact temperature that a chef is looking for. I just want my food hot so I can eat it. So you really just want to keep in mind who you're getting your information from and does it match what your expectations are from a product. Now my next little tip on being a smart consumer isn't necessarily about being a smart consumer but it's just something I feel personally. Um, when you're doing your research and you're really thinking about buying a product and you're doing all this look you're looking into it very heavily you kind of feel like invested in that product you kind of really want it so I really suggest that if you're not able to afford that product just yet save up for it I really don't feel that you should settle for a lesser product if you not if you don't really have your heart set on it so I'm all for saving up your money and really getting that one product that you really want of course you can settle for less and you know pay a little 
less than what you're looking for. But with that comes potential buyer's remorse. You don't want to regret that you bought that item instead of what you really wanted. You might find yourself always really looking at that product regardless of the new product that you got instead. So I really say, you know, save up your money, penny pinch if you have to, and get that product that you really have your eye on. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is when you're buying a product, and if you're one of those people who want to be up with the latest and greatest, definitely be sure of when newer products in that line are coming out, because that can lead to some serious bias remorse. And for those of you who don't know what buyer's remorse is, it's when you feel regretful for buying a product and you end up, you know, just feeling regretful about it. So we want to avoid that at all costs. So definitely make sure you know when a product is coming out. That's something you got to do your research on as well. Know when something new is coming out. I know so for some people like app for Apple buyers, it's really hard since Apple's like switching up the schedule nowadays. It's kind of hard to tell. Those who bought the iPad 3 probably thought they had a whole year before the iPad 4 came out. Then Apple kind of blindsided everyone and dropped the iPad 4 a couple of months later. So it's things like that you can't really help. But if you know that something follows a certain cycle or you're hearing rumors about a new product coming out soon, hold the gas on what you're purchasing. You really want to make sure that the new thing isn't going to be that much better. Or if you really want what you're going to plan on getting now, that's fine if you don't care about what's coming out in the future. That's great, go ahead and purchase it. But if you're one of those people that say, oh man, I should have waited, then really do your research and find out if anything in that line is coming out soon because you don't want to have that feeling. Now, another thing about being a smart consumer, I feel that if you purchase something and you find that you don't like it or there's a slight defect, Definitely feel free to return that product as soon as possible, as long as you're in your window of return. So usually it's 14 days, 30 days some places. Definitely, definitely return it at the, the slightest thing. Me personally, I feel that if my product isn't perfect right out the box, I'm going to return it. There's no reason for me to keep a defective product or a product with a slight defect. There's no reason for it. I paid a lot of money. I'm going to make sure I get the best product available for that price. And I highly urge all of you, if you feel like something is a defect, return it, exchange it for a new one, and go with that. There's no reason for you to spend a lot of money if you're investing in something and not getting a perfect product right out the box. Now, if the place you're purchasing a product from has insurance, that might be something to consider. Me, personally, I do like having insurance on my products. Just so I can have that cushion of knowing that if something goes wrong, I can exchange it. I'm a big fan of making sure my products work and that I can always go back and get something functional for the money that I paid for it. Now, some people I know who think this is a scam, the whole insurance thing is a scam and try to avoid it at all, at all costs. But it's definitely something you might want to look into for things that have like a low life cycle, like headphones. I always make sure I get insurance on my headphones because you, everyone knows that headphone cables mess up or things happen and you know you just can't account for everything. So you really want to have that cushion and you won't have to worry about something going wrong and then you being stuck with that product. So I really highly suggest it. It's worth the investment on in my opinion but it might not be for yours and that's okay, but it's just one of my tips. And that pretty much wraps up my tips on how to be a smart consumer. I know it's a lot to swallow right there, but those are some good things to keep in mind when you're looking at a product and you're purchasing it and what to do after you purchase it, things like that. Now, just because we're average consumers doesn't necessarily mean that we don't deserve the best of what we want. So I really hope that these tips help you out in making a purchasing decision and doing research to find the product that fits your needs and what to do with them afterwards. And all right guys, this is your average consumer. Till the next video, peace.